Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're visiting yet another Canadian city to take a look at its rapid transit system, and this time, it's the turn of our nation's capital city, Ottawa. Located at the border between Ontario and Quebec, Ottawa is currently the fourth largest city in the country, with more than 1.3 million residents in its metropolitan area. With this moderately large population comes the need to transport them efficiently, and Ottawa's rapid transit needs to be on par with its status as Canada's capital city. We'll take you guys through the past, present, and future of Ottawa's rail rapid transit system in this video. Let's get started! Before we get to the video, we want to give a quick shout out to our newest patrons Nick, Jonathan, and Jonathan. Thanks so much for your support! Supporting us on Patreon is the best way to help us keep bringing new content to you guys frequently, and you'll also be able to access our exclusive community Discord server for a direct channel of communications to us. You can also support us by giving a one-time donation, which you can do through our coffee page. And furthermore, we wanted to quickly remind everyone to practice social distancing in this difficult time. Please stay home and keep yourself and your community safe. Alright, time to get back to the main content of the day. Ottawa's public transit is run by OC Transport. Short for Ottawa Carlton Transportation Commission, OC Transport manages all of the region's public transit services, including two light rail lines, 170 bus routes, as well as various other bus and paratransit services. For today's video though, we'll be focusing on the light rail system in Ottawa, how it came to be, and how it will transform in the future. The first line that opened in Ottawa's light rail system was the Trillion Line, or Line 2, which services the corridor from Bayview near the Ottawa River to just south of the Prince of Wales Bridge. To be clear, the Trillium Line is often referred to as light rail, but the 40-meter two-car articulated Alstom Caradia trains currently used on the line are also used for regional rail purposes in Europe. The Trillium Line started in 2001 as a pilot project that required OC Transport to acquire a federal government waiver to operate these European-style trains, which also used a European signaling and train control system known as Induci. The Trillium Line terminates at Bayview Station at the north, where riders can interchange with Ottawa's new Confederation Line, which is also known as Line 1 in official media. The Bayview site is also the location of a major future development, which is likely to house Ottawa's tallest building at over 200 meters tall. The Trillium Line's corridor connects through the city north to south, traveling on a largely single-tracked corridor with some passing loops, in order to allow trains to patch each other in opposite directions. The corridor connects through the Dallas Lake Tunnel with stations adjacent to Dallas Lake and Carleton University, south of which the line crosses the Rideau River. Just north of the Trillium Line's current terminus at Greenboro is the Walkley Yard, which is the OMF for the Trillium Line. This yard is directly adjacent to a freight yard, and is off the main line south of the Elwood Diamond. The Trillium Line then terminates just west of Bank Street and east of the Sawmill Creek Reservoir, where connections can be made to OC Transport's Transitway BRT services. Unlike Edmonton and other western cities, Ottawa enjoys a relatively frequent via rail passenger service west to Toronto and east to Montreal. A station in Fallowfield in the northwest of Riverside South also provides some limited regional connectivity. Intercity rail service to Ottawa operates out of Ottawa train station. The station offers weather protection, a large station building, and a mix of five high and low covered platforms. Ottawa Station is one of the nicest on Via Rail's network. The second line in Ottawa's light rail system is the Confederation Line, which opened just a few months ago in September of last year. The line links from Blair Road in the east to Tunney's Pasture Employment Zone in the west in its first phase and connects to the Trillium Line at Bayview Station. The line's opening more than doubled the previous size of the network and brought along with it electric vehicles, which offer a more frequent and environmentally friendly service. Unlike the Trillium line, the Confederation line uses communications-based train control, which allows for extremely frequent service with the possibility of fully automated operation in the future. Unfortunately though, the service has been bumpy ever since it opened, with the trains causing a lot more problems than was expected. We hope that Confederation Line will keep being improved for the better, so it will be able to reach the standard of service it was meant to have. Given the massive expansion, the Confederation Line needed a major new maintenance facility known as the Belfast Yard. The yard is located between Ottawa Station and OC Transport headquarters on Belfast Road, and it includes maintenance shops, a train wash, and a large-scale train shed to store trains. The indoor storage is a nice touch. 
The Belfast Yard has pulled double duty prior to the line's opening, being used to manufacture the low-floor 48-meter Elstom Citadis RVs that are used on the line. Trains currently operate in two car sets, but each train within that set can be extended with an additional segment for a total of 120 meters with 18 doors per side, which should operate some of the highest capacity in the country. Given the expansion needed for the network's second phase, the Belfast Shard is already being further expanded to its ultimate build-out size, which means that further phases will require additional heavy maintenance capacity. The yard is also somewhat unique in that it is connected to the main line via a short tunnel between Tremblay and St. Laurent stations, and it is hence not directly adjacent to the line. In terms of service area, the Confederation line uniquely replaces previous transitway bus services that has some of the highest ridership in North America. The line connects from Blair in the east across the city to the St. Lawrence Shopping Center, Ottawa train station, and Herdman station, where connections can be made to transitway services south of the Rideau River. After crossing the Rideau River, the line passes through the University of Ottawa Lees campus, continuing along the Rideau Canal past the University of Ottawa main campus. Following this, the line passes underground into the central subway section, which provides station connections to the Rideau and Shaw centers, Parliament Hill, the Supreme Court, the National Archives, and numerous other downtown locations. Following the downtown subway section, the Confederation Line emerges south of the massive Liberton Flats redevelopment site and the National War Museum and Pimisi Station. The line continues on from here to reach the interchange with the Trillium Line at Bayview Station before entering an open cut as it comes to terminate at Tunney's Pasture. Alright guys, so this is what Ottawa's current rail rapid transit system looks like. We've got two lines serving quite a large portion of the city, especially the downtown and the different university campuses, with further connectivity available on the rest of the transitway. Now, let's shift gears and talk about the future of Ottawa's light rail system. Ottawa's Stage 2 expansion program is already under construction, and with it beginning so soon after Line 1 opened, it means that the city will be in a sustained period of transit expansion for over a decade. Starting with the Trillium Line, expansions will be made to add two new stations and additional passing loops to the existing corridor, which will require a nearly two-year shutdown of service, to much anger from residents and Carleton University students that depend on the service. New Flirt DMU trains will also be rolled out from Stadler, which will be double the length of current trains, requiring platform extensions at all existing stations. These trains are also used in European regional service, and they offer more modern amenities and a high level of flexibility for future electric conversion. This will be an interesting task given the low clearance in the Dow's Lake Tunnel. In addition, the Trillium Line will be extended as a dual track line to Bowesville and Riverside South. This will mean many more park and ride commuter lots, but we're still pretty positive about it as true to our vision of the Trillium Line as a regional rather than a light rail line. This expansion will also enable future extensions to the transitway at Barhaven and Fallowfield, which could potentially lead to another useful via rail connection. Interestingly, there will also be a rail connection built to the EY Center and Ottawa McDonald Cartier International Airport, a growing hub and Canada's sixth busiest. Opening in 2023, this will be either the third or fourth air rail link in the country, depending on the opening time of Montreal's REM network. Platforms will only be 40 meters long, which will not accommodate the new Stadler trains. Instead, the older Alstom trains will be refurbished and repurposed for this service, with two sets operating as married pairs on the main line, which is an interesting choice. In addition, trains will not interline, but feature a time transfer at South Keys Station, meaning that riders going north on the Trillium Line will need to make a cross-platform transfer here to reach points beyond. This leads to an unfortunate three-seat ride to downtown, unlike the other air rail links in Canada, which all provide a one-seat ride. But then again, we're still supportive of the plan due to the significant benefits a rail link brings. The Confederation Line will also see several extensions during Stage 2, which will add numerous stations, a western branch, and a new light maintenance facility. The eastern extension of the Confederation Line will travel in the median of the Queensway to extend the line along the previous transitway route. The stations will be placed at major roadways and appear quite minimal in budget price when compared to existing Confederation Line stations. We're happy to see more coverage, but based on past experience, ridership on this route will likely be highly dependent on bus connections and commuters driving to stations, which will likely hurt ridership as the line is relatively far from residents in several areas. Transit-oriented development could be a positive solution here. 
The western extension of the Confederation Line would travel along previous transitway sections, as well as a mixed right of way from Tunney's Pasture to Lincoln Fields, where the line would split into two branches, terminating at Baseline and Moody. The transfer point at Lincoln Fields will feature four platforms, another positive future-proofing feature on the line. This smart decision will enable more frequent services on both branches during low-frequency times, as one branch will act as a shuttle similar to the Trillium Line's airport branch. The extension to Moody will serve the communities of Britannia Heights, Bayshore, as well as residential communities east of Moody Drive. Moody will also be a major transfer point for connections to points west, including Canada and the Canadian Tire Centre, which may also get service with a future extension. There will also be a light OMF at Moody, which will provide light train maintenance, cleaning, as well as storage in order to reduce deadheading. On the other branch, the extension to Baseline will serve the communities of Whiteshore, Parkway Park, as well as Algonquin College at Baseline. This will also be a major transfer point for service to points south along the transitway, which may also get service with a future extension. On a final note, some viewers will be disappointed if we didn't mention the future Stage 3 expansions. These are not yet set in stone, but it would extend the network like so. Across the Ottawa River in Gatineau, the smaller city is also getting a light rail line. There are currently three different route options under study, with a connection point with the Ottawa LRT still to be determined, although it is currently planned to use the Portage Bridge to cross the river. And here we have it, the future of rail rapid transit in Ottawa. Ottawa is said to have quite a nice extensive network, which is fairly well future-proofed with the long platforms and advanced signaling on the Confederation Line. Given all this growth, Ottawa's system will be almost as large, if not larger than the systems in Alberta in only a decade, and is poised to overtake Edmonton in size by the late 2020s. This will likely catapult Ottawa to the front of the race to become Canada's next large city. We're really excited to keep following Ottawa's transit explosion, and we'll be sure to bring you guys up to date with any developments. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below to tell us what you're most excited for in Ottawa's transit future. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and support us on Patreon and Coffee if you would like to help us keep making great videos for you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.